And I think there's there's kind of a backstory to it too. Like I remember kind of going around trying to do all this judging stuff amongst my own, uh, you know, me and some other competitors, and we're trying to get judges in all the right places. And I was talking with Chris Gerard and Michael Spencer and Chris Schuster with the X Games, and we'd help put together the judging panels there. And then the AFP kind of came up as like, look, let's come together and connect the dots on a point scale for events for the athletes. Super important part that we needed. There was no, you know, number one best half pipe skier. And the rankings are important uh, on a number of reasons. Number one, it gives uh, validity and structure to the competitive landscape, not only from an athlete perspective, but also uh, on the brand side. Sponsors that are looking to get more involved with a particular athlete, they can look at their results, their, their past results, how they've escalated up in the rankings in either that specific discipline or overall. And uh, from a media perspective, it tells the story of what's happening in competitive free skiing and there's uh, quantifiable data that supplements the story that they're trying to tell how an athlete has progressed and um, improved either year after year or from the start of the season to the end of the season uh, within a specific discipline or um, quite frankly coming back from an injury and how they may not have uh, skipped a beat it uh, created transparency on how to get to the invited event um, rather than the committee that selected for due tour and X Games having to look at all these other results, the very first thing they could look at was the AFP ranking and say, well, geez, here's the top 10 in the world. Let's make sure they're in. And, it, and then for, for young kids, it allowed those kids to go, oh, I just need to get in the top 10, and, and that's how I'm going to get to the X Games. Uh, the analogy that, that I always would use, again, coming from media and coming from Free Skier Magazine, where we were constantly telling the story of the athletes and of competition and of the culture of skiing, was you know a guy like Simon Dumont you know, gets on the plane, he's got a nice seat up front, he's sitting next to some guy who's all buttoned up. And, you know, the guy sees he's got his Red Bull hat on or whatever, and he says, well, you know, what do you do? And Simon's response, you know, to date until about 2006, had to be something of, of uh, a little convoluted, more of a, a long-winded answer about, well, I'm a skier, and I compete in the X Games. Have you heard of the X Games? Well, I have some gold medals at the X Games. You know, there's, there's no, there was no consistent way to just get the story across. So being able to say I'm the, I'm the number one half-pipe skier in the world, um, you know, or I'm the number two or three or whatever, uh, that instantly tells the story of our sport, that there's some organization, and being able to, to crown a world champion, which is one of our missions, is to, is to create that story and it also creates a goal for for skiers who are coming into the sport where it's not just about going to the X Games it's it's there's a path there's a road to to be number one to be a champion so the athlete ranking system began as a fairly simple uh, mathematic process of assigning a point value to each event uh, based on a, on a scale of bronze, silver, gold, and platinum level events depending on their level of uh, a combination of things, media, uh, athlete attendance, prize money, uh, just the overall package in general. Up until this year, it was refreshed at the end of each season. So uh, the point, point accumulation throughout the season would end basically in April at the last event, and then in August when uh, the first event started again for the following season, all the riders would have a zero point total and just accumulate through the year. Uh, that, we found, didn't give an accurate reflection of the rider's status until well into the season, April, or not April, February, March, you know, before it really gave an accurate uh, reading of who was really skiing well that season. So what we've changed for this year is an actual 52-week rolling calendar so that um, gives just a, a constant flow of, uh, of a picture of how the riders are, are, are competing. Um, obviously, there's a big gap in, in events through the summertime, but a rider status will remain the same throughout the summer, and then at the beginning of the season, we'll have a much more accurate picture of where everybody's sitting 
from the very start of the season on.